Tom Scovana. That's an interesting change in the methodology. <clears throat> You've heard from many citizens of Loveland and the residents who live adjacent to the ground. Their voices are virtually uniform in their opposition to the DREES development plan. In analyzing your vote tonight, the first question, who do you represent? That's an easy question. You represent Loveland. You are the Loveland Planning and Zoning Commission. We do not question the Grail's right to sell the land. We do not question DREES' right to buy the land or to develop the land. However, we all strenuously question, as should you, the desire of DREES to develop the property to more than triple the number of houses allowed under the current zoning. No entity has the right to expect a zoning change. Remember, you do not represent an out-of-state development corporation. You do not represent an out-of-state property owner. You represent Loveland, Ohio. Any analysis of this or any development plan is what is best for Loveland. We all know Loveland's infrastructure is already overburdened. You've heard that all before. You've heard it tonight. The sewage capacity is totally inadequate to support the development of 209 houses. To borrow a phrase from the Declaration of Independence, it is self-evident that our roads are insufficient to support 209 additional houses. Over 2,100 car trips, plus multiple school bus trips, the added construction traffic, the infrastructure improvements required for this proposal will just add to Loveland's misery of gridlock. This proposal adds nothing to Loveland's residents of quality of life. This is just another cookie cutter housing development, something the draft master plan specifically states we, the residents of Loveland, want to avoid. The housing mix proposed is already available in Brandywine, White Pillars, and Butterworth Glen. Each has patio homes and each has open spaces. A development wholly allowed under the current one acre development, one acre requirement would still prevent protect the ravines and the ponds because that land is economically undevelopable. This corporate developer is claiming that the proposal protects land and any development that would be there would have to do the same. There's nothing unique about this development in that sense. While we understand the 1.92 units per acre claim as to density, that is for the entire project and it is a statistical game, a statistical game that all developers play. The actual de density of developable land is closer to three to one. This development will also further strain the Loveland schools. It is disingenuous to claim that these houses will not add to an already overburdened school system. Just a couple of years ago, the Loveland School Board proposed a large increase in taxes to fund additional schools. Was that because we had enough schools? I don't think so. The developer acknowledges this, but tries to deflect that burden by claiming, well, that won't happen for several years. Does that matter? The same can be said about other services. The fire department isn't worried about any strain on their services. <clears throat> Is that why we were just asked to approve an additional fire levy? We have excellent fire protection, but we are, are we going to be asked to provide more funding in the future? Well, of course we are. Adding 4 to 5 percent more population will require more police, other services. Our city manager, he does a great job in managing our costs. We really do, and I appreciate that. But at some point, growth requires co more costs. And because of the duplicated taxes that these houses will have to pay, we're setting Loveland up to have a more difficult time paying or passing those levies in the future. Simply put, this proposal will not be helpful to Loveland. In short, a vote to recommend this proposal from Drees by this committee will be a vote to overwhelm Loveland's infrastructure, the roads, the sewage, the schools, support services, and others. It would be contrary to the current zoning against the guidance of the current comprehensive master plan, and even more so against the newly drafted comprehensive master plan. It will likely create a neighborhood that will be double taxed and oppose future levies, and it is obvious to everyone here tonight, but one or two, that this proposal is against the will of the people of Loveland, the people that you represent. Your recommendation should be no. Thank you.